Welcome back to another episode. In this session, we're going to be talking about investing in private market assets with a self-directed IRA, self-directed 401k, self-directed Roth IRA, or other tax advantaged investment accounts. So what is private market investing? Well, think any type of investment that's outside of traditional stocks and public bonds. So investments like private equity, real estate, cryptocurrency, gold and silver, venture capital, fund opportunities, and various other alternative investments. That is alternative to the traditional stock market. Now, we're not just gonna talk about the concepts of investing in the private markets. We're also gonna share with you a tool that you will have access to as an equity trust client known as WealthBridge. And WealthBridge is the mechanism by which you can gain access to private market investing platforms and be able to invest with an incredible amount of ease. As always in this session, we'll answer a question at the very end, so make sure that you drop your questions in the comments section below. So let's get started. Now, investing in the private markets can mean many different things to many different individual investors. For example, some investors, when referring to investing in the private markets, are talking about their self-directed IRA owning, let's say, a single-family rental property, and the cash flow from that rental property flowing back into their self-directed IRA, growing tax-deferred, or in the case of a Roth IRA, growing tax-free. Or maybe it means making a private money loan to a real estate investor for a fix and flip type project. And then the interest income flows back into their self-directed account, growing either tax deferred or tax free. Now, in today's session, we're going to focus on four specific subsets of the private market investments. So the first is private equity. When we talk about private equity, we're referring to investing as a equity partner in a privately held company. Now, this can come really in two different forms. It could be where your IRA has an equity interest directly in a company, private equity, or it could be where your IRA is a partner in a private equity fund. And the private equity fund is made up of many investors, and then all of those investors collectively, under the management of a general partner or general partners, is then going out and investing in a variety of different private companies. So when you hear that term private equity, and you'll hear that term used a lot in the media and other sources, generally what they're referring to is a fund structure where your IRA or other account would be a limited partner in a fund amongst many other investors. And then that fund is going out and using the funds of all those investors to invest in a variety of different privately held companies. Those could be companies that are struggling and the opportunity is to take over that company, renovate it, if you will, and then sell it very similar to, let's say, house flipping. Or they could be companies that are more matured and they're generating positive cash flow. And that's an asset that can sit in that fund and generate profits for the investors. The second asset type to talk about is private credit. Now, in contrast to private equity, private credit is where your IRA or even non-IRA funds has a debt instrument rather than a equity interest in a company. So when we talk about a debt interest, that could be where your IRA is making a loan directly to a privately held company, or it might be a private credit fund structure where your IRA has a interest in a fund and collectively amongst many investors managed by a general partner or general partners is then making loans, hence private credit, to a variety of privately held companies. You may also hear the term convertible note. So that would also be classified as a debt instrument where your IRA is making a loan and then that note or that loan can then potentially convert to shares of a company or that company at a future date. Again, that's known as a convertible note. In fact, I have a quick video to share with you here. This is an interview from CNBC where they talk specifically about private credit and mention family offices in their strategy around investing in the private credit markets. The offices now manage six trillion dollars and one of their favorite places that they're coming into is private credit. Now, especially replacing those regional banks, a new survey from Goldman Sachs shows that family offices are preparing to pour cash into private credit. That's loans to companies given directly or through a fund. A third of family offices say they plan to allocate more money to private credit and two thirds 
currently have some private credit exposure. Now, the attraction here is double-digit returns thanks to these higher interest rates. And on top of that, you have banks pulling back on loans. I think it leaves room um, for a whole new group of investors to kind of come in um, and be really opportunistic in this space. And if you know anything about family offices, they love being opportunistic on dislocations. It's why we see higher cash balances. And the private credit market has tripled over the past year, uh, eight years to $1.4 trillion. Most family offices are working with special managers or funds for their private credit, although a growing number are making the loans themselves. Family offices have nearly half of other investments in alternatives. So that's hedge funds, private equity, and real estate. They have 28% in equities, and they are holding about 12% in cash. So that's a very high level of cash. And you can see our latest family office investor interview out today on CNBC Pro. Okay, now that takes us to venture capital. What is venture capital? Well, generally speaking, venture capital, as a rule of thumb, means investing in equity or potentially in debt instruments in privately held companies that are early stage startup companies. Now, the philosophy or investment thesis around investing in venture capital, generally speaking, is investing in opportunities that may come with higher risk and a longer term horizon, most likely a lack of liquidity, but a higher return potential. Now, of course, there is no guarantees in investing in these types of investment opportunities. That's why we encourage you here at Equity Trust to do your own due diligence and make sure you're investing based on your own suitability parameters. Equity Trust is not here to provide investment advice or suitability of any investments. Again, venture capital, meaning, generally speaking, investing in early stage or startup companies. And that could be in the form of equity or could be in the form of private credit, like we talked about. And just like private equity, the venture capital opportunities could be in the form of a fund where your IRA has an interest in a fund. And then that fund collectively amongst many investors is going out and investing in either one single startup company or early stage company, or could be a variety of, of startup companies or early stage companies. Sometimes you'll hear of people referring to investing in venture capital funds that specifically focus on certain types of technology or certain types of, let's say, healthcare. So you'll learn that you could potentially look around for different types of opportunities, different types of venture capital funds that meet your specific interests and your specific criteria on what you want to participate in. Okay, that takes us to the last method, which is investing with your self-directed IRA into a private direct company investment. So what we're talking about here is where your IRA takes a equity interest or maybe buys shares in a privately held company. So compared to the fund structure where your IRA is investing collectively with many other investors and then there are likely several different holdings or many different companies that that fund is investing in, instead you are investing directly in the target company with your self-directed IRA. Now that could be in the form of your IRA having an interest, oftentimes known as a membership interest or units in an LLC or a partner in a limited partnership or it could actually be shares in a privately held corporation. For example, Brad, an equity trust client, talks about how he used his self-directed IRA to invest in a privately held company owning shares of an emerging technology company that has the expectations of going public at a future date. Let's have a listen to what Brad has to say. My wife and I just returned from uh, spending 18 months in Liberia, in West Africa. Uh, we were serving as missionaries. You, we can try to explain all we want, but unless you've been there, you don't understand just how hard life is for them. And so we have committed um, to try to assist them with some education programs. Mm -hmm. If we had our money in CDs earning 0.0005%, um, there's not much we could do uh, to help them, uh, but we are, because of the success of our investments, um, it allows us to invest in and support educational institutions 
which can provide online education to um, college students in Africa. And education is really the only solution to the poverty that so many of those people are dealing with. And in my IRA, I have primarily put most of my investment in multifamily housing. Uh, I have a little bit of a background in real estate. I am a real estate broker and I have done uh, mostly commercial real estate in my career, um, triple net leased properties, but it, they're getting so expensive that it's difficult for the small investor to get into commercial real estate. And so we found a couple of different groups that offered um, smaller investment opportunities in multifamily housing. I'm not in a position to buy a $25 million multifamily housing project. You know, but I am in a position where I can I can invest fifty or a hundred thousand dollars in a particular project, and then um, wanting to diversify, I don't want all my eggs in one basket. And so instead of putting everything into one project, I spread it over ten or eleven properties now that we have invested in. Uh, four of the properties have closed and returned. Um, our investment and profits. Um, in my Roth IRA, the, the primary asset is a small emerging technology company. Um, it is not publicly traded yet, so it was a private equity placement. Product is rolling out. It's, um, it's being sold in retail stores now. We're getting ready to, the company's getting ready to go international with the product. We think it will be at least a 10 bagger. Um, and maybe it has the potential to, to do a, a hundred times uh, return of our original investment. There's lots of charities, lots of, you know, they need medical, they need housing. Um, there, there are lots of needs, but we have chosen to support um, educational organizations that can really change their lives. Now that we've talked about the basic concepts of private market investing, let's talk about the how-to application. A couple resources for you to check out, investmentdistrict.com. This is a site hosted by Equity Trust with a variety of private market investment companies and private market investment opportunities. We don't endorse or recommend specific companies, but we do provide this list so that you can browse in a menu fashion, reach out to these various companies, and find the investment opportunities that make the most sense for you. Secondarily, as an equity trust client, and if you don't already have an equity trust self-directed IRA, you can easily establish an account. And once your account is established, you'll have access to your account online where you can then access Wealthbridge. And you'll see here with Wealthbridge, you have the bridge to private market investment platforms. So you're able to seamlessly integrate your self-directed IRA or other self-directed account with private market platforms so that you can easily browse, educate yourself, identify private market opportunities, and then seamlessly invest through your self-directed IRA. So to get started with establishing an account if you don't already have one, you can check out in the comments box below a link to schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation and then you would be able to gain access to the Wealthbridge platform. All right, so with that being said, let's jump into our question for the day. Our question today is from Ernesto. And Ernesto asks, I have a question concerning private money lending. Can a private investor lend money to an entity from a self-directed IRA or Roth IRA for that particular entity con to conduct whatever type of business that entity is conducting? Uh, well, of course, within legal framework, the self-directed IRA or self-directed Roth IRA could make a loan to a company. Now, that loan could be secured by, let's say, real property or real estate. That could be secured by equipment. That could potentially be secured by stock in the company. There could be specific covenants in the specific promissory note agreement. So there's all different ways in which you can structure private lending with a self-directed IRA secured by real estate or other types of assets. Now, you do have to be mindful that when your IRA is making a loan to a company, you have to make sure that there aren't prohibited transactions occurring, that you're not transacting with a disqualified person. 
But as long as you're doing everything within the confines of the law, your IRA could certainly lend money to a business. And that loan could be secured by, again, real estate, other types of assets, or potentially could even be unsecured. We'd always encourage folks to speak to their attorney or other professional regarding making these types of loans and these types of investment opportunities. All right, so that's all we have for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's session. And as we always close with, keep leveraging compounding interest in the absence of taxation.